Uh, the story comes from Exodus today. Uh, it comes in the point where uh, the Israelites have gotten out of Egypt after a bunch of plagues, and uh, they got through the, the sea, and Pharaoh had chased them through, and all his army drowned, and now they're at Mount Sinai, um, and God's about to give the Ten Commandments. So, when Moses had told the words of the people to the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them. Today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and prepare for the third day, because on the third day the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You shall set limits for the people all around, saying, Be careful not to go up to the mountain or touch the edge of it. Any who touch the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch them, but they shall be stoned or shot with arrows. Whether animal or human being, they shall not live. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they may go up on the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people. He consecrated them, he consecrated them and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, Prepare for the third day. Do not go near a woman. On the third morning, there was a thunder and lightning and there was a thick cloud on the mountain, and a blast of trumpets so loud that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. They took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire. The smoke went up like the smoke of a kiln, while the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses would speak and God would draw and God would answer him in thunder. When the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, the Lord summoned Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people not to break through to look at the Lord, otherwise they will perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves, or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the Lord, The people are not permitted to come up on Mount Sinai, for you yourself warn us, saying, Set limits around the mountain and keep it holy. The Lord said to him, Go down and come up, bringing Aaron with you. Do not let either the priests or the people break through to come up to the Lord, otherwise he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. Then the Lord spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the Middle Ages, uh, people didn't have access to Bibles. Um, it was sort of kept separate from the masses, and even lots of the clergy had never read the New Testament, large swaths of the Old Testament. They had heard the stories, some of them, but they were in Latin and Greek and Hebrew, and most people didn't know those languages. And sometimes I think that might have been a good policy, because this stuff is weird and confusing. The uh, question for today, uh, which ended up edited in the sermon, in full was this. If God is all-knowing and planned to send Jesus, why did he put the Israelites through the exodus and the giving of the law? Particularly this whole bit about set limits around the mountain and smoke and fire, and if they touch the mountain, they'll be stoned or shot with arrows. Like, go ahead, run with it. What do you do with that story? <laughs> thing is, is ultimately, our faith isn't about whether or not anyone touched a mountain that day. Our faith isn't whether it was smoke or steam. It's about who God is, who we are, who God is for us. Ultimately, all the stories in this book all the texts and laws and hymns and whatever come down to those questions. Who is God? 
Who are we? If we make our faith simply about assenting to say, oh, this is exactly what happened at Mount Sinai, I think we're probably going to miss the point. Because on the level of who's God and who are we, there's not too much difference between the Exodus story and this thing that happened at Sinai with the giving of the Ten Commandments and Jesus' whole life, death, and resurrection. Because in all of it, God is the one who saves us, who frees us from what enslaves us, who calls us to new life. God is the one who is bigger than any king or representative or congressperson or ruler. God is the one who is the one with authority in our lives. The one who sets the limits and boundaries of who we can be and gives us rules to live by so that we can have life and function together. So whether that's getting you out from under the hand of a tyrannical pharaoh or calling you to walk along a dusty road down to Jerusalem to get crucified. God's still the same. Reaching out to a world with love and compassion and mercy. And we're still the same. Because the Israelites, wandering about, we wander about all the time, confused about what to do with our lives, in need of someone to give us a clue, a light in our life, somewhat powerless to free ourselves from what enslaves us, especially things like death. And sin. And so who we are meets with who God is. We're the saved ones. God's the one who saves us. If that's the lens that we come to all of Scripture with, read all the weird passages you want, like flip open to Leviticus. That's the lens, though. It changes how we read. It changes if we need to say, yeah, smoke and fire, or like, yeah, you know, Jesus was talked to this guy on Tuesday at 4 a.m. Like, who cares what time? <laughs> Our faith is alive and not just a set of historical facts or a set of stories that we have to point to. Because in our lives today, that same saving act, the same God is active, calling us to our neighbor and to new life, to put away and let die what's holding us back and weighing us down, to share our stress with the community and with him. Why did the exodus happen? Why did Jesus not come till a few thousand years later? I don't know. The way history unfolded, I guess. <laughs> Jesus comes back tomorrow, 20 years from now. I don't know. Second coming is going to happen. But the end result is the same. No more death. No more sin. Those don't rule us. All that rules our lives, peace and love and freedom from our God. That's all.